Now at 8 o'clock on WKYT this morning, the Cats are heading to the SEC Championship, but they had to get past Georgia first. We'll have highlights on your official UK station. In Lexington, crews have worked through the night to try and stop a natural gas leak in a neighborhood. Several homes have been evacuated. We'll be live at the scene tracking the repairs. And we've all sprung forward an hour. It may not seem like a big deal, but it could impact your health. That story ahead on WKYT This Morning. This is WKYT This Morning. Good morning. I'm Michelle Chamberlain. Sean Moody has the morning off, and it is 8 o'clock, not 7 o'clock, just for those of you who are just now waking up. And the Cats have a big game today at 1 o'clock, but before we talk about that, let's head to meteorologist Micah Harris with a look at today's weather. Good morning, Micah. Hey, good morning. Yeah, we're going to be looking at that rain outside. So, yeah, you're going to lose that extra hour of sleep and then have to wake up to this stuff. Pretty heavy downpours in a couple of spots, but for the most part, uh, we're seeing some just light rain out and about. But it's more of a nuisance than anything else. 60s outside this morning, a gloomy start. There's no doubt about that. We hit the afternoon, staying in the 60s for the most part, and have that on and off rain all day long. It's going to be a difference from this morning to this afternoon. I'm going to talk about that. And when we start to see the rain move on out, coming up. Thank you, Micah. Kentucky has won 28 SEC tournament titles, and today, they could win 29. The Cats are facing the number one seeded Aggies later today, but they had to get past Georgia first. Lee K. Howard has some highlights from the semifinals matchup against the Bulldogs. Well, Saturday's game between Kentucky and Georgia was a much closer game than many expected. The Bulldogs gave the Wildcats all that they could handle the majority of the game. The Wildcats came into the game looking to reach their sixth SEC title game in seven years in the first half. Georgia was the team jumping out to the early lead. J.J. Frazier finds Kenny Gaines for three. Georgia had a five-point lead at halftime. Go to the second half now. Here come the Cats down by a point until Tyler Ulis misses the corner three, but Isaiah Briscoe there for the putback. Kentucky up by a point later in the half. Now Wildcats up for Briscoe to Ulis for three. That's money. Next Wildcat possession, Jamal Murray. He is so good in the clutch. Drives and lays it in. Kentucky up by nine. Under two minutes to play. Still a nine-point Kentucky lead. Murray twice between his legs, once through the hoop. Knocks down the three to put the nail in the coffin, and the king court belongs to the Wildcats. Kentucky wins 93-80. to And now the Wildcats will face those Texas A&M Aggies for the second time this season. They will battle it out for the outright conference bragging rights. It's coming up later this afternoon at 1 o'clock. You can see it on ESPN. The Wildcats playing their very best basketball in the month of March. They'll try to continue that this afternoon. Back to you. And like Lee Kay just said, the Cats face the Aggies today. It's a rematch, and the team is ready to rebound. WKYT's Dave Baker is in Nashville this morning. He continues our SEC tournament coverage live from Music City. Good morning, Buzz. Good morning, Michelle. Now, the first thing that's got to rebound is Micah's attitude. Did I just hear him say that people are going to be tired? because you sprang forward and there was going to be some rain. This is like Christmas morning for Kentucky fans. It's SEC Championship Sunday. The selection show is later tonight. They find out about the path that they will take to hopefully a ninth NCAA championship. Now, when John Calipari first got to Kentucky, he wasn't a big fan of postseason tournaments like this one. But today, he will lead the Cats into the SEC tournament championship game for the sixth time in the seven years he's been at Kentucky. The Cats, as Lee Kay said, will take on Texas A&M. That comes after a hard-fought win over Georgia yesterday afternoon, where Jamal Murray, Tyler Eulis, and Isaiah Briscoe were beasts. For the fans, they're pumped the Cats are back in the finals, and that win could go a long way toward putting them on a path to play their second-round NCAA games in Louisville. But for the coach, it set the table for a run at the ultimate prize. The attitude was great. You know, we're built for this. Um, you know, we need a tough game like this, you know, that we had to go back and forth, down a little bit, a little adversity. You know, I felt like we responded real well. But it prepares you for next weekend, and that's what I want to use these games for. And that was a great test. That was a war. We got down and we didn't, we didn't stop. We kept playing. And they didn't go away. We had to make big plays and big rebounds down the stretch to even think about beating them. So, again, this afternoon at 1 o'clock, the SEC championship game top seeded Texas A&M. They're going for their first championship of any type since 1987 in basketball. It would be their first since joining the SEC. Kentucky looking to ring up yet another SEC tournament title. So, the tournament 
title game, 1 o'clock today. Then the selection show, the all-important selection show. Where will the Cats go? Who will they play? You can see that live on WKYT at 5.30. It's a two-hour expanded show this year from 5.30 to 7.30. And then we'll recap everything. We'll be with the players and Coach Cal over at his house after the tournament during the selection show later today. And we'll have that special for you coming up tonight at 11. So, Michelle, please work on Micah before the next half hour. Let him know this is a great day. Back to you. <laughs> Are you here in Micah? It is a great day. Great basketball day. Follow the Cats throughout March on our website, WKYT.com, or download the WKYT News app to never miss a score. It's available for free on the app or Google Play Store. Crews have been working all night to fix a gas leak in a Lexington neighborhood. Now they're working off of Man of War Boulevard on Tanbark Road. Several homes have been evacuated in that neighborhood. WKYT's Mike Byers live at the scene with what we know this morning. Good morning, Mike. The 1100 block of Tanbark Road continues to be taken over by Lexington Fire and Police, as well as the Kentucky Utilities and Columbia Gas. This is all due to a gas leak that occurred overnight. Now, please tell us they first responded to this neighborhood shortly after midnight last night. We're told that they had to, uh, firefighters had to evacuate roughly 10 homes where the gas leak occurred. Now, Kentucky Utilities continues to be on scene as well, and they're turning as they've turned off electricity to some of the homes that were evacuated as a safety precaution. Right now, there's no timetable for when all of this will be fixed. Please tell us Columbia Gas is bringing in more equipment to fix the leak, and they're taking it step by step. We're told the company plans on pinching off the gas line to stop the leak. Now, crews don't know what caused the leak. Please tell us there was a huge lightning strike in the area at the time when the leak began. So it's not clear whether that has anything to do with it, but um, we'll try to bring you the latest updates as information comes in. Continue to stay with WKYT throughout the day as we'll update you online and on air. That's the latest here in Lexington. I'm Mike Byer, WKYT. Thousands of people line the Chicago River to celebrate St. Patrick's Day. Crews dyed the water green to the sound of cheers. The tradition goes all the way back to 1962. The parade coordinator says the tradition happened almost by accident. Crews poured an orange powder into the water, turning it bright Kelly green. But if you want to do some dyeing of your own, stick to food coloring. The formula for the St. Patty's tradition is closely held secret. We didn't dye any of our waterways green, but here in Lexington, folks celebrated St. Patrick's Day a few days early. The party began with a festival at 11 o'clock yesterday morning, followed by a parade. St. Patrick's Day is this Thursday, so don't forget to wear your green. Another celebration brought awareness to Down Syndrome. The Down Syndrome Association of Central Kentucky held its annual World Down Syndrome Day event in Lexington. The goal was to show that those with Down Syndrome can live full and happy lives. There are things that are hard and there's different health things and emotional things that our family as a whole gets through, but she doesn't suffer. Former UK player Jared Polson spoke at the event. World Down Syndrome Day is March 21st. We are springing forward, and if you haven't already, you need to set all your clocks forward one hour. You may not notice it just yet, but the time change can be bad for your health. WKYT meteorologist Jim Caldwell takes a closer look. Look out the window, and nature will tell you change is coming. But that change doesn't just affect the weather, it affects time. More so, our internal clock. Recent studies show springing forward could affect your health. No, I did not think about it, but now that you pose the question, yeah, I can see where it does affect people. Researchers in Europe say people with underlying conditions are more likely to have a stroke during this time of year. And the CDC's website reports men with heart disease are at a higher risk for a heart attack days after springing forward. I believe it. I think just even the slightest change um, in someone's schedule can cause stress. Dr. Larry Burns with Lexington's Urgent Treatment Clinic says these health risks all go back to a disruption in our sleep pattern. My thought of that is that it's probably like a jet lag effect. Uh, your body's a little bit out of balance and so there's uh, some metabolic changes, and so you're at risk for some medical problems at that time. Dr. Burns says changing your clocks, not the mechanical one, but the internal one, is likely to put you briefly on a 25-hour day. When we lose an hour of sleep, we're going to get up essentially an hour earlier, so the next day it'll be like 25 hours that we're having to function, and even though we'll sleep the next day, you will not go to sleep earlier.
But I know it is just an hour, but it feels a lot more than that when, when your whole life is pushed forward an hour. And I'm convinced whoever came up with the idea did not have little children. And if you haven't already, remember to reset your clocks. And today is also a good day to check the batteries in your smoke detectors. Your time now is 810. WKYT this morning is just getting started. We'll take a closer look at the doping allegations against several Russian athletes, including tennis star Maria Sharapova. That's coming up. We have the rain outside early this morning. We're going to be tracking that as we go through your day, too, with a few rumbles of thunder later on this afternoon. Your forecast is next. WKYT news and weather updates on 1045 The Cat. Now, your hour by hour forecast with meteorologist Micah Harris. Pretty gloomy start to the day, and now we're starting to see that sun rise out of bath. Typically, the sun was rising right there around 7 a.m., but now we're springing forward, so it's going to be roughly 8 a.m. Here's the look outside, and you can see those rain showers streaming in from the south, and they are not moving that much in terms of not trying to get on out of here because we got much more coming in from Tennessee. So there's a lot of moisture heading our direction. You won't get extreme amounts of rain out of this, but it is pretty widespread. It covers the larger real estate of our viewing area. That batch of rain that I was talking about early this morning is now over the mountain parkway and it's going to last a little bit before it gets on out of here. So expect light rain right along the mountain parkway. Eventually heading over 460 here in the next 30 45 minutes. How Rogers Parkway, we're taking a bit of a break. I know we have still some rain left over, uh, but for the most part, here comes another batch. It's going to be rolling on through 127, 27, BG Parkway. I mean, you name it. It's going to be a wet go at it this morning. 61 degrees there, Mountain Parkway with a little rain falling. That goes for Frankfurt, Lexington, and Jackson. Now, as we travel through your day and toward the afternoon, the only difference from this afternoon to this morning. Few rumbles of thunder, and that's the only difference. So we head off towards your evening and night, and things start to fade away. Of course, they're going to fade away when all of us are going to be inside. But yeah, while we're sleeping, there's not much rain going on. Tomorrow morning into the afternoon, tomorrow, more rain starts to move on in as a little system creeps on in. Watch this hour by hour. So we get through the day, there's 8 a.m. Off towards your afternoon. And you can see by 4 p.m., we still have some rain out and about, but there's some heavier downpours with a few rumbles of thunder. Now, we get through the evening and off into the night, like I was talking about. That stuff just kind of fades away. There's not much going on. Tomorrow morning, hopefully, this turns out true. This particular model saying it's not much rain there at 6, 7, 8 a.m. because the kids are going off the school bus stop. And uh, yeah, you just don't want that rainfall on. Not on a Monday morning, at least. We go through the day there on Monday, and that system gets a little bit closer, and look what happens. We get scattered showers and thunderstorms back in the forecast on Monday. So today and tomorrow, 70% chances of rain, even a few rumbles of thunder here and there. We head toward Tuesday off into Wednesday, only a small chance of rain on both of those days. But next week, look at that, Michelle. We're back in the 40s and 50s for highs, even a freezing reading showing oh, up on your forecast. I so. Oh, here comes winter. It's later on next week. Got to get that coat back out. That's right. Mwah. Oh well. When WKYT this morning returns, Russian athletes are facing doping allegations after using a type of medication that's now been banned. A closer look when we come back. Tuesday night's Mega Millions jackpot is $20 million, and Wednesday night's Powerball jackpot is $70 million. Keep up with the latest news on WKYT.com. Join the conversation on Twitter and become a part of the WKYT Facebook family. Welcome back to WKYT This Morning. Your time now is 8.18. Here's an update on our top stories. Crews are still working to stop a gas leak in a Lexington neighborhood. We're told firefighters responded to Tanbark Drive just after midnight last night. Police tell us they've evacuated 10 homes in the area, and they say Kentucky Utilities has turned off the electricity to those homes. Columbia Gas is on the scene trying to stop the leak, but there's no timetable for when it will be repaired. Crews aren't sure what caused that leak. Doping scandals seem to plague professional sports over the last few years, and the latest scandal involves a few Russian athletes who have been using a type of European medicine that's now banned. Jonathan Vigilotti has the latest on how this has impacted tennis star Maria Sharapova's career. A speed skater, weightlifter, and volleyball player, all Russian, are the latest athletes to test positive for meldonium. Russian tennis star Maria Sharapova made the little known drug a household name this week when she admitted to using it. I made a huge mistake, and I 
I've let my fans down. In a Facebook posting Friday, she said she didn't know this substance was banned and promised to fight her suspension. Meldonium is a heart medication available over the counter in Eastern Europe that's known for boosting endurance by increasing blood flow. Russian officials were baffled when the World Anti Doping Agency banned the drug on January 1st. Our main goal is to express disagreement with the including of this drug on the list, said Yulia Mireshnikova with Russia's Federal Sports Agency. 99 athletes have failed the drug test so far. This latest scandal could not have come at a worse First time for Russian sports. In November, Russia's athletic team was suspended from the 2016 Rio Summer Olympics after being accused of running a state sponsored doping program. On Friday, the International Association of Athletics Federations met to consider reinstating the team. President Sebastian Coe. While progress has been made, the Council unanimously agreed that the Russian authorities need to undertake further significant work to satisfy the reinstatement conditions. So RUSAF should not be reinstated to membership of the IAAF at this stage. Sharapova says her doctor prescribed her meldonium, which she took on and off for 10 years. She'll contest the suspension with the International Tennis Federation. She's already found unlikely support from fierce competitor Serena Williams. There's still more to come on WKYT This Morning. Sports is next. Kentucky uses a second half effort to get past Georgia, setting up a rematch with Texas A&M in this afternoon's SEC championship game. That's coming up next in sports. And it's going to be a perfect day to sit inside there at 1 p.m. and just watch the game because this is not going to be a good Sunday in store. We'll talk about the rain. I'll show you when it moves on out in our forecast coming up. Right to the rim. Oh my God. The madness is coming. Bits and pieces of rain out and about most of this very light. We're getting one heavy downpour as you work your way back toward Nelson County, about to roll through Bardstown, BG Parkway. All that is moving northbound, and we still have plenty more moisture down south to go. So it's just going to be a rainy day. Most of this just showers, but we can't rule out a couple of rumbles of thunder later on this afternoon. Temperatures in the upper 50s, lower 60s. If you're not feeling the rain right now, the temperatures actually feel quite nice. But the difference from this afternoon to this morning, rain-wise, throw in a few rumbles of thunder. Once we get into the evening and night, things really fade away. But then we pick back up on a different system for tomorrow, starting off tomorrow morning, off into the afternoon hours. That's a look at your weather. Let's check out sports, see what's going on. Hey, good morning, everyone. This afternoon, Kentucky will be playing for a 29th SEC title when they meet up with Texas A&M in Nashville. But the Wildcats had to fight to get there, overcoming a large deficit on Saturday to beat Georgia. Early on, it looked like Georgia was the team that wanted to play on Sunday. First half, Georgia jumping out to the early lead. J.J. Frazier finds Kenny Gaines for three. Georgia led by five at the break. Second half, Wildcats down by one. Tyler Eulis misses the corner three, but Isaiah Briscoe grabs the rebound, puts it back in. Kentucky up by one. Later in the half, Wildcats now up four. Briscoe dishes to Eulis for three. That's good. Next Wildcat possession, Jamal Murray. He's so good, isn't he? Drives, lays it in. Kentucky up by nine. Under two minutes remaining. Wildcats still up nine. Jamal Murray doing what Jamal Dirk Murray does. Knocks down the three to put the nail in the coffin. It's a big blue party in Nashville. Kentucky wins 93 to 80. And the Wildcats and the Aggies of Texas A&M will now battle it out for the outright conference bragging rights. It's coming up this afternoon at 1 o'clock. And after the win, well, the Wildcats say that they expect nothing more than a war against Texas A&M. I know the bigs that they rebounded a lot, and they, I know in that game I had to box out and really be physical with them down there. So I think uh, just knowing that a little bit more is, is going to be an asset for us. They're, they're a really good team. Uh, you know, we're a really good team. So uh, I think it's just going to come down who wants it more tomorrow and um, you know, who's more focused. So it's an early game, and uh, it'll be fun. It'll be, it'll be a good time. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be a war coming in tomorrow. You know, um, that's, what, that's, that's, that's really what it's going to be tomorrow. So we're looking forward to it. 
So the Cats are looking forward to it. I'm sure Texas A&M as well, and we will have your highlights right here at 6 o'clock on WKYT. Again, game time, 1 o'clock on ESPN. That'll do it for your morning sports. Have a great day. Now at 8.30 on WKYT this morning, crews are still trying to fix a gas leak in a Lexington neighborhood. Several homes have been evacuated, and we're live at the scene with the latest on the leak. The Winchester community is rallying around those who lost their homes and their friends in a deadly apartment fire. We'll find out how they're helping out. And the spotlight is back on Republican presidential candidate Donald Trump, not for his campaign, but because of violence breaking out at his rallies. We're on the campaign ahead on WKYT This Morning. This is WKYT This Morning. Good morning, I'm Michelle Chamberlain, and of course we're talking about the Big Cats game today at 1 o'clock against the Texas A&M Aggies for the SEC Championship. But before we talk about the game, let's go to meteorologist Micah Harris with a look at today's weather. Good morning, Micah. Good morning. Yeah, you know it's a good day to stay inside when you see a lot of green there on the screen. This is First Alert Defender Radar Network, and all that moisture streaming northbound, so you're going to be seeing rain showers on and off all day long. But we get into the afternoon and we'll actually see a couple of the rumbles of thunder here and there. Temperatures 50s and 60s this morning. If you're not getting hit by the rain right now, it feels really nice outside. By the afternoon, we're at 67 on and off with those showers and those few rumbles of thunder. I'm going to show you what you can expect uh, hour by hour and also look towards your day tomorrow to kick off your work week coming up. Thanks, Mike. And now the Cats have made their way to another SEC title game, and they'll face Texas A&M today at 1 o'clock. WKYT's Dave Baker is in Nashville this morning, live, getting us ready for today's big game. Good morning, Dave. Hey, Michelle. You know, this is uh, the chance for Kentucky to win a 29th SEC tournament title. They're now up to 47 48 regular season championships. They dominate the SEC and their fans have dominated this championship. And so this afternoon, a chance to win that tournament title if they can get past the Texas A&M Aggies. And what a game that these two have put on recently. One could argue that in recent years, the Cats and the Aggies have become the SEC's best rivalry. And of course, their most recent classic was back on February 20th when it looked like Kentucky had come from behind to force overtime when Isaac Hunt. Humphreys was teed up for slamming that ball on the court, and the Aggies held on. It's just one of those things that happens. Should there be a measure of redemption just to get this one from them? Yeah. I mean, right. from that? I mean, yes and no. Like, we've moved on. Like, we move on 24 hours after a game. But we just need to go out, and uh, I mean, we're going for a championship. No, it's going to be exciting. It's gonna be, we're looking forward to it. And a lot of guys, you know, want this game. They, didn't have, they haven't seen Alex yet, so, you know, um, <clears throat> Looking forward to see how he plays and, and how they handle it. So we're just going to go out there and focus on us and hope to come up with Michelle, this will be a great basketball game, and this place has been filled with Kentucky fans. But as you can see over my left shoulder, tip off is at noon central, one Eastern. These are UK students behind us. What happens is, is after teams get beat, that opens up some more tickets for students. So 90 student tickets open up. They can't get them until 10 o'clock central today, but these guys have been in line already for an hour. And guess what? It's spring break. They're not going to the Micah Harris Padre Island or Sandesta or something <laughs> like that. They're coming here to see the Cats play this weekend, and then they'll follow them to where they're going for the NCAA tournament. You'll see that selection show 5.30 to 7.30 tonight on WKYT. And then the gang will all be back tonight to uh, preview everything that's going on with the NCAA tournament. We'll be at Coach Cal's house for the selection show later. But first things first, the Cats go for a championship later this afternoon. But for now, that's a story live from here in Nashville. Thank you, Buzz. Big basketball day ahead for sure. Now follow the Cats throughout March on our website, WKYT.com, or download the WKYT News app to never miss a score. It's available for free on the app or Google Play Store. Crews have been working all night to fix a gas leak in a Lexington neighborhood. They're working off of Man of War Boulevard on Tanbark Road. Several homes have been evacuated in that neighborhood this morning. WKYT's Mike Byer is live at the scene with the latest. Lexington police and fire, as well as Kentucky Utilities and Columbia Gas, continue to remain on scene here this morning in the 1100 block of Tanbark Road. 
after a natural gas leak occurred just after midnight last night. Now, please tell us they responded to this neighborhood just after midnight. I spoke with a couple joggers who live in this neighborhood just a few minutes ago, and according to them, a tree was struck by lightning and uprooted, causing this gas leak. Uh, it somehow severed a gas line around, causing the gas leak. So that was according to a couple of residents that live here in the neighborhood. Meanwhile, as I mentioned, utilities as well as Columbia Gas continue to be on scene this morning. Please tell us firefighters had to evacuate roughly 10 homes on both sides of the roads where the gas is leaking. We've been told Kentucky Utilities came out overnight and turned off the electricity to some of the homes that were evacuated as a safety precaution. Now, right now, there is no timetable for when this will be fixed. Please tell us Columbia Gas is bringing in more equipment to fix the leak and they're taking it step by step. We're told the company plans on pinching off the gas lines to stop the leak. Now, crews don't know what caused the leak. As I mentioned earlier, a couple of residents say a tree was struck by lightning, um, causing, uh, causing it to fall on the ground and uh, severing a gas line, which is the reason they say was the reason for the, the gas leak. So crews aren't 100% sure what caused it, but a lightning uh, strike did occur last night. This was according to police. So eh, both stories seem to be lining up. It's not 100% sure if that was the cause yet. But for now, just stay with WKYT throughout the day. We'll keep you updated online and on air. Live in Lexington, I'm Mike Byer, WKYT. In Clark County, the community is helping the victims of an apartment fire. Three people died when the building on Spring Miss Lane in Winchester caught fire Friday morning. Now many are coming to terms with what happened. Some are figuring out where they go from here, but that's where the community is really lending a helping hand. The Beacon of Hope put together care packages of some of the basic needs for those who lost everything in that fire. You know, those things you take for granted, or we take for granted every day. And it's so it's lotion, you know, just things like that, deodorant, razors for men and ladies. If you would like to make donations, she recommends donating to CeCe's Closet and Eastside Baptist Church in Winchester. Jackie Al Jr. has been charged with manslaughter in the case. He's currently in jail on a million dollar bond. He will be in court tomorrow. Now, neighbors are having a candlelight vigil for those who lost their lives in the fire this Wednesday at 9 o'clock at the BNP Apartments on Spring Mist Lane. Lexington firefighters say an early morning fire could have been much worse. The home didn't have working smoke detectors. The fire started around 5 a.m. yesterday morning on Della Drive. The man inside made it out safely, and firefighters say it started in the back of the home and spread to the attic. They were able to put out the flames fast. We're just days away from Tuesday's election, and the campaign trail is being overshadowed by Donald Trump's violent rallies. Now some of his Republican rivals are questioning whether they'd support him as the nominee. Here's the latest on the campaign from New York. Police used pepper spray to disperse protesters outside a Donald Trump rally in Kansas City Saturday night. I know it's not. Earlier, Secret Service agents formed a circle around the presidential candidate as a man tried to rush the stage at a rally in Ohio. And Trump was forced to cancel an event Friday as fights broke out between his supporters and protesters in Chicago. The chaos there spilled into the streets where police made several arrests, including CBS journalist Sopan Deb. There have been other groups of coordinated protests at past rallies, but nothing as, as massive as what I saw last night. The Republican frontrunner declined to take responsibility. They want me to tell my people, please be nice, be nice. My people are nice. Instead, he blamed supporters of Democratic presidential candidate Bernie Sanders for instigating the violence. What our supporters are doing uh, is responding to a candidate uh, who has, in fact, uh, in many ways, encouraged uh, violence. Trump's GOP rivals criticized the protesters, but also faulted the billionaire. I, I still, at this moment, continue to intend to support the Republican nominee, but it's getting harder every day. Responsibility begins and ends at the top. Trump has rallies in three states scheduled for Sunday. Brooke Silva Braga for CBS News, New York. Here in the Commonwealth, Kentucky Secretary of State Allison Lundergan Grimes is set to launch the state's online voting registration tomorrow. Grimes will join other officials and county clerks to officially launch the system. The new system will let all eligible Kentuckians register to vote online. Right now, you have to go visit your county clerk's office to register, or you can print out a form and mail it into the State Board of Elections. With the new system, you'll also be able to update or change your registration online. 
The launch will take place tomorrow at 1 o'clock in Frankfurt. Your time now is 8.39. Coming up on WKYT this morning, we're quickly approaching prom season, and it can be expensive. But one group in Minnesota is making sure all girls can go to the prom. That's ahead on WKYT this morning. We have a pretty ugly day out there for your Sunday. Now I'm going to show you when you could have maybe a couple of shots at some dry periods coming up in just a few minutes. Now, your hour-by-hour -hour forecast with meteorologist Micah Harris. Well, that rain just continues to funnel on in. It's going to be on and off as we go through the, the morning hours and afternoon hours. It's not going to change through the day. The only difference you'll see, showers this morning, maybe a few rumbles of thunder later on this afternoon. No severe weather expected. It's just one of those days you can just expect some rain. It doesn't always have to be flooding concerns or severe weather concerns. It's nothing like that. It's just a rainy day. And you can see down toward 27, 127. All that is flowing northbound, and that's still coming in from Tennessee. If you're heading toward Nashville, well, you better probably better take off. It takes about three and a half hours to get there. But uh, yeah, you better take off if you haven't left yet. But if you are leaving, I'll tell you this uh, it's going to be a wet go at it. 60s outside early this morning. We hit the afternoon. And we'll still have the 60s in store. It's not going to really rise that much more as we go through the day. Maybe a couple of 70s here and there, but for the most part, we'll stay in the upper 60s. Here comes those round of showers and thunderstorms. There's 4 p.m. later on this afternoon. More than likely, uh, you may be heading out to an early dinner after the Cats game or whatever it may be. It's a perfect day to stay in and watch some basketball. Just doesn't look too good. Once we head off into the evening and night, things really fade away. Uh, but once it fades away, don't think it's going to stay that way for the, the day on your Monday. Once we hit the afternoon, that's when we see another system roll on through. And that'll give us more showers, more rumbles of thunder today and tomorrow. Pretty much the same as we look for widespread rain covering a large real estate of our viewing area. Here's the seven-day forecast and the breakdown for you. Good chance today, good chance tomorrow. Both of those days will have a few rumbles here and there. Then we hit Tuesday off into Wednesday. An interesting system on Tuesday. Storm Prediction Center has a slight risk over far northern Kentucky and also the Ohio River Valley region. But I'm just not seeing that right now. I'm just not seeing that on those particular models. So I'm leaning more toward staying out of the way of severe weather around here as opposed to actually having it. I just don't see it on, on any of this data. So we'll see what they think here in the next couple of days as we get a little bit closer there. That would be on Tuesday. But I think for the most part around here, we stay dry with only a small chance. Then we hit next week. Off into your Thursday, Friday, Saturday, that's when things start to change. We start to see those 40s and 50s creep on in here. Remember, do not plant plants until after, oh. after uh, Keeneland. Good For, point. Yeah, absolutely. So just keep that in mind as, as we take off. Well, and it is almost springtime, and soon, you know what that means, it will be prom season. High school girls will spend plenty of time and money to get ready for the big night. But what about girls who cannot afford the prom? Yeah, in Minnesota, that's where Operation Glass Slipper steps in. Let's take a look. Um, I kind of like the bright colors on this one. For teenagers like Destiny Jensen, prom preparation always begins with the dress. I'm probably going to look for like a princess style, kind of maybe a little puffy. The search for perfection isn't easy. That looks cute. Yeah. Okay, we'll try that one. And oftentimes that dream look comes at a price not everyone can afford. After all, the dress is just the beginning. Hair, nails, makeup, skin, shoes. A prom has become so expensive, and it's such a rite of passage. Let's try those. It's why Pam Phillips started Operation Glass Slipper 10 years ago with the idea that cost shouldn't keep girls from that special event. We did this to fill that need, and every year there has been a need of about a thousand girls. Dresses of every color and style, both gently used and brand new, will be given away to girls who may not have the financial means. They realize uh, what they're getting, and it's pretty exciting. But Operation Glass Slipper goes one step further, throwing in shoes, jewelry, even the handbag to complete the look for free. It's the whole shopping experience. I like it. For Destiny, this day has set the stage for that high school rite of passage. Well, it's kind of like one of a lifetime thing for a teenage girl. So, I mean, I might not do prom next year, so I guess it's pretty big this year. The perfect prom often begins well before the dance. Because I think it was most beautiful I tried on. What a cool organization there. Your time now is 8.46. More news is next.
Good morning, I'm Bill Bryant, Lexington developer Dudley Webb with Where Things Stand at Centerpoint. A clip of my Kentucky Newsmakers interview is coming up. Kentucky mornings start here. You're watching WKYT This Morning. Good morning. Hope you're having a wonderful weekend and you're on time with us. It's Eastern Daylight Savings Time now. Longtime Lexington developer Dudley Webb says the long stalled out Centerpoint project downtown is back on track. Webb is a guest on this weekend's edition of Kentucky Newsmakers. And here's some of what he has to say. Mr. Up. Webb, where do things stand now? Uh, they stand right now with the fact that we have a financing commitment on the garage. We'll be starting in the next 10 days. Uh, unfortunately, we're waiting on rebar. But uh, so everybody stand down for a couple of weeks here and we'll, we'll get this thing done. But it's go. And, uh, and finally, and I apologize for not only for myself, for the city, for everybody that held this thing up. But I can tell you that uh, it'll be worth it. And what uh, will the project eventually come to look like? What will it be? It'll be the same design that was last approved by the city. It'll be the parking garage underground. Two towers for the hotel, and uh, one's a residence inn, one's a Marriott convention hotel, uh, one, an office building, and, uh, and Jeff Ruby's. And all of those are committed? They're, all of those are committed. I mean, they've been committed for eight years now. So, Are you seeking other tenants? Uh, we are. Obviously, we are. We have about 40% of the office building committed again. We had to start over, which is very difficult, you can imagine. But, um, and they'll come out of the woodwork. I think people are waiting on the credibility of concrete. <laughs> and some would say the, the, the credibility in believing that this is a, actually going to happen. Yeah. And, and you understand that at I'll this do. point, after, a, after an eight-year wait by the, by the people in this city, right? Yeah. It's become, you know, it's, the, it's almost a, a punchline and a joke, the, the hole in the middle of the city. I, I understand that better than anybody, but I can tell you this. We've never undertaken a project we didn't finish. And we've done $3 million worth of real estate projects all across the country. What is your time frame? Our time frame is 10 months for the garage, probably another year for the towers. And financing this time will be done how? Financing will be done the same way. The city has seen the financing plan. They approved it. They signed off on it at the time that we got the excavation permit. That was a requirement. That hasn't changed. This does not depend on some investor from far away. No, 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 no. That, that was an interesting story in itself. People think that was conjured up. Uh, Every, every, we vetted this process. We had five different developers with us in that plan, and they all did it. And unfortunately, the guy passed away. And but the trustee, it's one of the most prominent attorneys in the country, just said, "Hey, we're, it's it's done at that point in time." All right, you have been bound by confidentiality agreements uh, for uh, some uh, time now. About a year. Is, is there anything that, uh, that you know, as we end our interview here, that you? would like people to know. No, I, it I, is. I just, my frustration was that in 2014 when we had the pieces together, they pulled the rug and didn't issue the bonds. And those involved, particularly the people in the horseshoe, I think pretty well understand now that we weren't asking for anything but the issuance of the bonds. The Kentucky lead turned and stepped up and did it. They, the city said, go to Frankfurt. The Larry Hayes, the Secretary of Economic Development Cabinet said, no, the, the city's already agreed to that. Now go ahead and do it. He wrote a letter to the city. You all had that letter. Why they did do it, I'll never understand. It cost us millions. It cost us two tenants that were important to downtown. It's just amazing that that, that happened. Now you can see my full interview with Dudley Webb and also hear from UK political science professor Stephen Voss on this wild election year in Kentucky and around the country. It's on Kentucky Newsmakers, which we'll repeat this morning at 10 on the CW Lexington. Set your DVR or catch it then. And we'll have all the latest for you bright and early this week on WKYT This Morning. I'm Bill Bryant, and we'll be right back. Welcome back to WKYT This Morning. Your time now is 8.56 on your Sunday morning. An exotic car auction in Florida is getting an extra dose of star power. Comedian and well-known Porsche holic Jerry Seinfeld is putting up 18 cars from his rare collection up for sale. 16 of those are Porsches. He's got 18 cars? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Seinfeld said it's time for other enthusiasts to enjoy part of his collection. Now, one of those cars alone, a rare 550 Spider, is expected to get more than $5 million at auction. 
crazy to think about, huh? Unbelievable. Yeah, why do you need 18 cars? I don't know. I, I've never understood that, but you know what? Good I, investment, though. He's going to make a lot of money. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that is very true. All right, let's check out weather and see what's going on the rest of your morning into your afternoon. Here's the breakdown for you, basically. Defender Radar Network, what you see there on the screen, is basically what you're going to see all day long. It's on and off showers, mostly, and then we can't rule out a few rumbles of thunder as we track off into your afternoon hours. So here's the breakdown. Here's hour by hour. We get into your afternoon. Watch the sh thunderstorm spark up. There you go. So just keep that in mind. And go Cats, too. Yes, Selection Sunday tonight at 530 here on CBS. Have a great day.